What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 151 of the Games and Drafts podcast. My name is Sunji. Joined as always by Finn Steele. Hello. And Steve is here also. What's happening, Steve? Good evening. I'm all right. How are you? Good, man. Really, really good. Yeah. Finn, you good? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, I've had a week off work. I've let the beard grow. I haven't bothered saving. What's the point? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've been good. Nice. Look, at yeah. you know, like you're, uh, you've got a bit of a, a bit, bit of pep in your step there, Finn. Like you're yeah, pep in my got step. A, got a bit of a grin on. A steppy pep. Yeah. Yeah. Steppy pep. I have, I have straight teeth now, so that's nice. You had your teeth done? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the process. I'm at, towards the end now. You see, I don't have that massive gap between my teeth anymore. It's nice. Wow. Yeah. It's good. Look good, man. GQ man of the year right here. <laughs> yep. Of the third year running. <laughs> <laughs> Working out, you know, getting two teeth. Got Botox next week. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's true. Yeah, not going to afford it. If I wanted, I couldn't afford it. Pecking plants. Pecking plants as well. He yeah, of course. Need them. Pick up plants. That's true. Yeah. Now. He's that's like true. No, he's like plants. Hench now. <laughs> Skench. Skench. Skench, yeah. Skench. Class words invented by us. Not implants then, because your, your squat game is weak. So you need butt implants. It actually is. Squats are bloody impossible. Squats are hard, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you weigh as much as I do. <laughs> and when you're as out of shape as I am, you know, any exercise is hard. Walking <laughs> is hard. Standing up, <laughs> difficult. <laughs> like, I hey, went I'll to a trampoline it. park um, just a couple of weeks back and my right leg has still not recovered <laughs> like i feel like i've like i have to like stretch it out every now and then i have to like do a proper like push down on it to to try and make the pain go away oh, old man stretch yeah that's how i know i'm old now <laughs> I, I, yeah. I know this is a, a peter k i think it's a peter k joke but i've got to that age now and sonny you the same where you just sit there and you get a random pain and you think this is it this is it. My yeah. time's gone. My time's gone. <laughs> and then yeah. it just disappears and you're like, oh, okay, I'll just carry on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everything's the worst. Every pain that you get is the worst now. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. When, when did we get to this point? I remember when we were youths, when we were, you know, peak physical fitness well. to a degree. Uh, <laughs> I think I often think back about kind of how busy we were when we were younger, you know, with the band yeah. and playing football. And I used to go and still watch. Le- like I'd, I'd do crazy shit, like do something on a Saturday morning, like hung over Saturday morning, go to the football Saturday afternoon, go to a gig or play a gig Saturday night, mm. be home at like one, two in the morning. And then Sunday, band practice, 11 aside football, five aside football, Sunday over, work. I'm yeah. like, if I did that now, I would need at least six months off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what to do the week. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how we did it. Like, I, I, you know, I remember the days when you used to be go out, used to be able to go out drinking Thursday, Friday, Saturday. There's no way I could do that shit now. No, no. Not a chance. No, that's why I'm not alcoholic because one, I just, one afternoon out is enough for me now. Mm. <laughs> can't do it. No, just, you know, we've got to that point now where, you know, the podcast is the most exciting thing of the week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. A bad thing. It's not a bad thing. No, no that's true. Um, but yeah, man, it doesn't feel weird to actually record. Like the last four things we've done have been live. Like yeah. It feels like forever ago that we actually Look. did the mm. last recorded podcast. Yeah. No comments coming up. What's up with that? I know. Yeah, I know. We're so yeah. used to uh, We're dead lonely now. jumping on things straight away. It's, yeah. you know, quiet in here tonight. Yeah. yeah. Squinny's usually already abused us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Brett's yeah. already declared his love for Logan Paul. Um, yeah. Chris is here just put in one word answers and we're like, Chris, what are you referring to? We don't know. Um, yeah. But we we love our Games and Graps community. We do. We love, we, love our, we love our community. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really good. It's really good. Yeah. The live shows have been really fun. Yeah. Oh, they've been Always really fun. good. Yeah, man. Thank you for everybody who has come along to um, the, the live shows. Uh, they've been so much fun. Uh, 
yeah, we've had a really good time doing them. You know, and the live, the, the live shows aren't going away. They're, you know, they'll still yeah. be here. It's, uh, it's yeah, we're just, we've, we've gone back to, gone back to, to basics this week. Thought we'd probably yeah. better do a numbered podcast just to keep the hardcore happy. Yeah, that's, <laughs> exactly. Because yeah, they're our fans of... and we're their knobs, like was pointed out in <laughs> the chat the other week. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Finn, you were going to say something. I cut you off. I'm going to take a lot of a lot of pre show for the pre shows to do. So a team like Overkill to have those and the podcast all at once, which is yeah. why we haven't done one for a couple of weeks. Yeah. 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 We thought it'd just be be better to do it that way instead of sort of bombard you with with stuff. But mm. we're still on a roll. We've still been you know sticking all this content out and bringing you shows on a consistent basis and. It's been good. Well, we're having a real great time doing this, and things are going to continue. Things are going to grow, and yeah, just bigger and better things to come from Team Games and Grabs. It's awesome. Yeah, Games and Grabs. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, Finn. Hello. What have you been playing? <laughs> well, I'm still plugging away at Persona Five. I think you're okay. about 100. I think 120 hours I think I'm at now. Long game. Jesus. <laughs> really good Ooh. though. Still enjoying it. Towards the end now. Or at least the end of the original game. Then they've got some extra mm -hmm. bit they added on for Royal. Um, but yeah, really enjoying it. Um, other than that, I've jumped onto uh, Psychonauts 2. Got downloaded by Game Pass. Nice. Uh, on PC. Which, uh, yeah, really good. I mean, yeah, just incredible. Liked it a lot. Might of the first game. Mm -hmm. Uh and I was like, hmm, I wonder how this runs on PlayStation, because I'm really enjoying this. I want to play it on the console. So I looked it up and found it runs really well. And it has a patch for the PS5. It's been oh, which meant it works at 60 FPS, which is great. Um, so I thought, screw it. I've got some I've got some credit left on my PlayStation store thingy. So let's pick it up. And I'm glad I did cool. it. Weird, weird, weird thing is, the first thing you see when you boot it up is Xbox Live Game Studios yeah. logo. It's like, whoa. <laughs> I'm on PlayStation. It's weird. Yeah, it's so weird. It's like when you load up uh, MLB on mm. Xbox and the first oh, yeah, thing that yeah. comes up is uh, the PlayStation Studios uh, yeah. like stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. What, what, a, what, what a time to be alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, wait, am I playing a PlayStation? <laughs> Look at your controller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's weird. Um, but... Psychonauts is great. Uh, I played mm. the second one last night, the first time I've really ever, I've, well, I've ever played it. Um, it's great. Yeah, it's so good. I love it already. Yeah, I like um, the characters, I like the humour, and I like the design of the game. Yeah, it's really good. very unique. I like it a lot. Yeah, uh, What too. else? I uh, played the demo for uh, Warrior Wear. Is it going oh, to be yeah, on Switch? I forgot there was a demo. I keep meaning to download it. Is it good? Yeah, it's been, yeah really good. Yeah, it's fun and enjoyable. Uh, some, there's a few handle of uh, micro games on the demo. Cool. But, yeah, enjoyable. Looking forward to that yeah. when it comes out. It's only a couple of weeks away, though, I think. So it's yeah, the 10th? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, not far off. Hmm. I'm going to download that demo later on. I wanted to try it out because uh, it's definitely one I've got my eye on. Because I I always love the the WarioWare games, like on the on the GameCube and stuff like that. So yeah, um, it's definitely something that I'm very much interested in. Same here, really, really good. Uh, and I think that's about it for games I'm playing this week, as far as I remember. It's, it's not. It's not. It's it's not. No. Nope. Uh, you got 100 on oh, of course. action arcade wrestling. <laughs> yeah, of course. I did indeed. Um. It looks when I looked at the list and looked at how much XP you get per like match, I was like, "Well, this is never going to happen." Um, but thankfully, I found a way you can get a ton of XP all at once, which is by playing a five-on-five -five elimination tag team match, uh, cycling between wrestlers using every single move you have, so it gives you the points for using unique moves, mm -hmm. um, eliminating people one by one, putting on easy mode to make it a lot easier, and uh, yeah, doing that. Nets you a crap ton of EXP all at once. You level about 10 times <laughs> just for one match. Uh, and yeah, it's really good. Really easy. Nice 100%. No platinum trophy, which is a shame. But it got some goals uh, in there. Yeah, it will bag you a thousand game score on Xbox, though. There's nice. that, yeah. That's good. Uh, so, yeah, it's a um, fun, fun little game. Amazing yeah, creations really cool. people have made. Amazing creations, man. Yeah, yeah really, really, really good. It's incredible. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it now. I think that's really it. <laughs> okay, now, now, you now that can be it. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> How are you, Steve? Uh, so, no real change for me. Other, uh, so, Animal Crossing, just 
I, I thought I was done with it for a few weeks. Nice. But I'm there every day, <laughs> you know. And, and, and actually, I've, I've, I've managed to unlock a couple of things. I was like, oh, well, that's, that's pretty cool. So nice. that's keeping me entertained and keeping me busy. Been playing Flight Sim, which I still think is absolutely great. Fantastic. It's just mm. super, super relaxing. Uh, in terms of anything new, I have been playing the FIFA 22 beta. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> and that's... I don't want to be the person that shits on FIFA because oh, it's, it's FIFA, it's the same every year. I think what my problem Genius. was initially... Well, <laughs> yeah, and I think... I was seeing people saying, "Oh God, this game is this. This is going to be the best FIFA for years," and I, I can't possibly go back to playing FIFA 21 now that I've played this uh, beta of FIFA 22. And I played a couple of games, and I was like, "I don't see the difference." But maybe it's because, and, and I think the more and more I've played it, the more I'm noticing little changes. You know, small. Mm -hmm minor things and look from a from a visual point of view looks looks great you know the stadiums look fantastic the lighting's great the players look great and once the once the full game is out and it's got the new kits and all of the you know all the squads are updated it'll look fantastic it will yeah. look it will look great but in terms of gameplay i think maybe i was expecting too much of a change now although we sit here and we criticise FIFA and people criticise FIFA. It's still the biggest selling football game, if not biggest selling sports game out there. Um, mm -hmm. So from an EA point of view, they probably think, well, if it isn't broke, why fix it? Now, there are parts of the game that are broke. You know, career mode, I've said it before and I'll keep banging the drum that it feels to me like whoever develops the career mode part of FIFA does not watch football or does not understand football. Because it is just, it just, it's just not very realistic. Now, some people will say, well, it's a computer game, it's not supposed to be. I think when it comes to a sports sim, it, there needs to be some realism to it. Well, the, 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 the word sim would sort of, uh, <laughs> you know, imply that it's, a, it's supposed to be a simulation of the real thing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so that's still something that needs ironing out. Um, but there are there are sort of little changes that, that when you do notice them, you go, oh, that's quite cool, um, you know, with the commentary and you know little bits, you know, with with how some of the players move. And the one thing that I have been doing quite a lot on this on on this beta was I've gone into career mode, but there's a new thing where you can create a club and you can start basically mm -hmm. from the ground up. So. I created a club, you pick a kit, and there's quite a lot of choice. You pick your club colours, you pick your stadium, your seats. You can pick what crowd noise you have, what goal music you have, what music the players come out to, which is very, very realistic. Mm -hmm. um, and you start with um, basically random, you know, generated players. Like Master League, uh, well, well, how it, yeah, it's in its it, old form. Exactly like Master League in its old form on, on PES. And I decided that I was going to actually start in, in League Two, which is the, the bottom division of the English football pyramid, uh, professional leagues anyway. Um, and actually, because you're not playing with the world's best players and because you're not, your team isn't full of 80, 90 rated players, actually the game becomes a lot more challenging. You know, you have to play the game completely different and do you find it has, more, well, that's find it more engaging? Going. Yeah, because I can't just, with these players, these, these players' average rating is like 65, 67. You know, they're slow, their passes go all over the place, they, they miss headers from six yards out, which actually to me feels more realistic because yeah. you and I watch football and we watch some of the best players in the world and they still make mistakes. Whereas on FIFA, the best players on the game don't make mistakes. They don't miss. They don't misplace a pass. They're as quick as, you know, Usain Bolt. Um, and, and so it's made it that little bit more enjoyable playing with players that are not as good because you have to almost defend properly. You have to build up your attacks. You can't just give it to the quickest player and, and run. 
Um, now, don't get me wrong, I have signed some quick players. But again, that's been challenging because I set myself a low transfer budget. So I had to go and get free players and stuff like that. So that's made it a little bit more engaging, a little bit more enjoyable, really hard because <laughs> I've, I've been having games where I've been winning 3-2, losing 5-4, drawing 4 all because both defences and the goalkeepers are absolutely terrible. <laughs> um, so it's made the games really open and quite entertaining. Um, so I, I guess my overall reaction is that it's FIFA, it's fine. I think the bit that I can't sort of get past at the minute is does it warrant me paying the price that it's going to be um, mm -hmm. when I have Game Pass and access to all these different games? And I think my taste in games has obviously changed over the last 12 months. Yeah. So does it warrant me paying 70 quid for the basic version of, of FIFA? Um I, I mean, don't it depends on how many hours you're going to get out of it. Exactly. If you're, if you're going I'm to play understand. 70 hours worth of FIFA, um, then, yeah, it's worth it because that's a pound an hour. Yeah, you of know, course. If you're going to play, play more than that, you know, eventually the game pays for itself. You know, if you get so much of enjoyment out of it, yeah, then, you know, eventually the game pays for itself. But, you know, with... I think there's that element with football fans and sports fans in general with like new like iterations of their, you know, the, the, the yearly updates of these games, you know, yeah. NBA, NFL, NHL, FIFA, all that sort of stuff. There's a, there's a, a little bit of sort of FOMO about it. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. FIFA 21 is fine. And FIFA 22 is basically going to be the same, but Man United are going to be wearing a different kit on FIFA 22 <laughs> the kit that they're wearing on the TV now. Yeah, and they're going to have the players that they've got now. Exactly. The new players and, that signed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you you want that. As a football fan, it's something that... With football, it's weird because, you know, it's something that you pretty much dedicate your entire life to. Mm. You pick your team, that's your team forever, and you're obsessed with that team for the rest of your life. Yeah. So if you're a gamer at the same time and you actually do enjoy playing football games... You want the latest version of it. Of course. And yeah, that's yeah. where that's where it hooks you in. It doesn't hook you in because the game's any different, because it isn't. Mm. Yeah. Um, but you you want it because it's more up to date. You get to play with your new players and their new kits, with you know, all, all the new bells and whistles that FIFA put on, but don't actually really change the gameplay all that much. Yeah, and I think although I said like the gameplay doesn't feel different, one of the things that I was thinking about the other day when I was playing it was actually if I if I was to download and fire up FIFA 16 so you know or 17 which is then you know five years ago and play it you'd notice a difference you definitely know of course yeah <laughs> yeah I played FIFA 14 not really that long ago yeah and and you can tell you're like oh yeah it does so it does change and I think um if, if anyone sort of, you know, when, when if you've played this or you play the demo when it when that comes out or you buy the full game and you think, oh, this is the same as FIFA 21, what I would say is just keep playing it because you'll notice the little changes. You're not going to get huge changes from a yearly football game but, but or a yearly sports game, but it will be enough changes that, you know, year on year, you'll notice sort of improvements. Uh, I guess it's just the price point, and it comes back to that yeah. that that argument about you know should they do what you know eFootball are doing, um, where there's a, a free version and then you can buy whatever parts you want, yeah. sort of thing. And you know, after Gamescom, there's you know a couple of other football games that are going to be free to play. Yeah, uh, UFL uh, football is one that um, was showing off at Gamescom yesterday and it sounds interesting it's so basically it's like ultimate team but um there's no pay to win so right, they're okay. doing it in a fair way so it's free to play um you know you pick your team you play against other people online that kind of thing um, no micro free, action, no, sort of uh, no no pay to win so basically they called it free to play and fair to play i like it and yeah so it sounds 
you know, things like that sound interesting. And the more that these things creep into the market, the more that EA might have to adapt and change their way of thinking. Because PES have obviously gone free to play because they've seen the success the free to play games bring in Fortnite, mm. Apex, those kind of things. Um, you know, and now you've got this UFL football coming in. There's another one called Goals that's uh, coming at some point. And, you know, maybe eventually EA will see the benefits of this. If they made fucking Ultimate Team free to play oh. with, like, with their microtransactions, they will clean up. Oh, easily. Yeah, yeah. They may as well build a solid gold mansion <laughs> with a with a fucking golden football pitch on on its roof <laughs> with the money they haven't even made yet off free to play foot. Yeah. Yeah. That would be insane if they did that. The amount of FIFA points that it will sell on day one would just be unbelievable. You could fucking <laughs> build a settlement on the moon. <laughs> you've just got all these little FIFA players running around like the clangers on the moon playing <laughs> ultimate team clangers. in their gold mansions gold posts made out of 20 pound notes yeah, <laughs> rolls, exactly, yeah. rolls of 20 pound notes making up the goals yeah. that's it it's just money it's just a planet money that's what it's going to be called yeah planet money yeah and it's just <laughs> a big round it's just a big sphere with the queen's head on it yeah, <laughs> with gold houses dotted everywhere. How did you get this money? We we made Ultimate Team free to play, but with microtransactions. <laughs> oh, makes sense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so basically, um, you fleeced parents in the entire you know every parent in the entire world. That's exactly what happened. And yeah. then you've got fucking Fortnite planet just a couple of moons <laughs> of planets away. They're like, we did the same. What a fucking <laughs> our idea. I think Fortnite is more than a planet. It's probably a whole like galaxy. Quite possibly, <laughs> probably, yeah. at this point, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that, that that's the way, uh, yeah. you know, going free to play in some capacity, I do think is the way forward. But the big sticking point for me with FIFA is, yep, it is the it is the price. Do the, do the little changes warrant the £70 price tag per year? No. But that, that's the same for every sports game. Madden hasn't yeah. changed in years. NHL hasn't changed in years. NBA barely changes every year. And still, these games, the, the prices are getting higher and higher. There's always an ultimate edition. There's always an ultimate yeah. edition of the ultimate edition. There's a, you know, we we, we, we want to build a gold house edition. There's there's all of that, <laughs> you know, sort of stuff. And that that's what makes it difficult to justify. I at agree. Least, at least when you've got a yearly franchise... Um, like Assassin's Creed, that used to be yearly. At least you'd be getting a different story and a different setting every single year with with new things added. So you'd be getting a fucking new game. Mm. With yeah. FIFA, you know, all the stadiums and shit are already there from the year before. Mm. All the players and their faces are still there from the year before. They've just got to shiny it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. So it makes it very difficult. Finn, I'm sorry. I know that you're not a big sports game person, but uh, these these are these are the arguments are that about? need to be had on this uh, on this show. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's like cool. I'll just yeah, I'll just zone out while you talk about football. It's cool. Thing is, it's like the hard <laughs> hitting debates. Thing is, it's like the WWE games, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like I know you mean. how 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 many years in a row were they copy and paste? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know. Breathless. Yeah. And it got to a point where it was so shit. That they had to un, they had to be like, oh, we can't even copy and paste anymore. Yeah, and uh, and this is something else that I kind of thought of, about with FIFA, and I was like, well, am I expecting too much? Am I expecting too much, too much of a big change? Because that kind of, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. If 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 EA were to go away and say, right, FIFA twenty three is going to be a complete overhaul, you are going to see a huge difference, mm -hmm. and then they balls it up like 2K did with WWE and yeah. then have to take a year off, that would be a disaster for... It'd be, for... It'd be, oh, it'd be catastrophic. It really would. So, so it's that kind of risk risk and reward, I guess, sort of thing. It didn't pay. It doesn't pay off sometimes. So it's just we, we, do the minor we, tweaks and keep going. thing is, with you saying, you know, are you asking too much? You know, we've all just spent a lot of money on shiny new consoles that are supposed to do shiny new things so yeah 
are you asking for too much? No, I don't think you are because, um, you know, one of the things with FIFA 21, like the next gen version, oh, there's uh, there's last minute goal celebrations, and you couldn't have that on the PlayStation 4 version. Why? Because... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's oh, just uh, because we couldn't. Yeah, it's a bit like the DLC for uh, Final Fantasy 7. It's like it doesn't really do anything different. It still looks the same, still plays the same, yeah. pretty much. It's like well, why not put it on PS4 as well? Yeah. That's it. It's, you know, it's one of the things. It's it's very much a, you know, why why couldn't you? Why, we want to see something different because, you know, you've promised us the earth with these new consoles. Mm. Yeah, for like sure. the for me uh, in recent memory, the biggest transition with with FIFA was um, FIFA fourteen on PS three slash three sixty to the version that they brought out on PS four yeah. and Xbox yeah. One. Because yeah. it was completely different. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Whereas now, you know, yeah, yeah, fair enough. If it's if if it works, it works. You just need to make subtle changes or little changes to to keep it working and keep it keep it moving along. But it's that seventy pound price point. That's that's the real thing. But while people still pay it, they're gonna keep doing it. So, you know, no matter what we say on this podcast, it ain't gonna change shit. Yeah, <laughs> and and I think despite regardless of what I said in terms of, you know, I've got, there's other games I've got now. I've got access to all these games on Game Pass and all that. Mm-hmm. Would I put 70 hours in over a, over a year on FIFA? Yeah, quite easily. Course, yeah, you would, yeah. Quite easily. Three, three or four hours on a Saturday night, a few more on a Sunday. You know, you're at 10 hours. You only got to do that for seven weeks. <laughs> yeah. so, and you're there, aren't you? So, I yeah. don't know. So um, there is, there's arguments to be had across the board with it um yeah. games are expensive is the long and short of it there it sure are yeah yes so what have you been playing <laughs> 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 ah. um honestly i haven't i've not really found an awful lot of time to do to do much gaming um i, I have been playing some um action arcade wrestling and i think it's fantastic really do enjoy it just a great fun little wrestling game taking things back to basics and there's just so much cool stuff in there like the flaming tables being able to throw people over the ropes into a bunch of flaming tables and they blow up and it just looks awesome <laughs> just little things like that the creations are great you, you can just keep going forever and it's very simple and very addictive and very fun to play but otherwise i've got stuff to play but at the minute i'm just sort of put i put my playstation on my xbox and i'm like what have i got time for here <laughs> what have I got? I've got the Ghost of Tsushima PS5 version to play, and I want to play it. I'm desperate to jump in and just get lost in that world. But when you've only got like a little bit of time, like I've been super tired recently. I have no idea why either. I've just been super tired. So, you know, when it comes around to sort of gaming time, after you finish watching a bit of TV after work or whatever, you know, I've just been at a point where it's like, I, I just, I don't know what I've got in me. So that's why, you know, AAW's come along at a good time for me because it's easy to put on play half an hour, 40 minutes or whatever, turn it off and never play it again. Or, you know, play it the next night when it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I did make a conscious effort to try Psychonauts last night because, um, it looks great. And yeah, I really do like it. I think it's really good. Um, I'm going to carry on with it. It seems just something that um, is going to be very, very enjoyable without breaking your microphone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But I've got other stuff that I want to play. I want to uh, Horizon Zero Dawn just had a 60 FPS patch, which uh, interests nice. me greatly as I'm currently sort of um, part of the way through um, a platinum run with that that I want to carry on with. But I, I need a I need to find a good stretch of time um, and a good period of time when I'm not completely shattered and tired out of my eyeballs, where I can just crack on and play games. Play some. I wanted a good stretch of time before I really got stuck into Ghost of Tsushima. So I don't just want to bit part it. I want to sort yeah. of, if I'm in, I'm in. I'm all in. So, um, yeah, my gaming habits are a little bit all over the place at the minute. But um, I'll pick it back up and I'll uh, get back amongst it all. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm not very interesting at the minute, it must be said. But, oh, I, tell you what, I what I did play briefly last week was uh, Last Stop. All right. Um, from Xbox Game Pass. It's sort of like a Telltale game kind of thing. Um, but it's great. It's very British. Really good British humour. Um, 
three separate. So basically, it follows three separate stories that intertwine along the way. Um, yeah, that's really good. I need to carry on with that. Um, I've got a load of stuff I want to play. I've got uh, twelve minutes that I want to play, which looks fantastic. So I've got loads that I want to play. I just just need to find time to play it. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, nothing that interesting for me this week. That's all right. It's all good. What? It's all good. It is all good. <laughs> right. So we got uh, we got gaming news this week. Uh, yeah, I got to play a little bit. We had the uh, games, whatever it's called, Gamescom. Gamescom. Yeah, a few few uh, big news stories coming out of that. Uh, Halo Infinite's got release date Woo-hoo! now in December. Yeah, it comes December eighth, twenty twenty one. So this year, not later That's next year. It. Yes, very cool. Look, looks good from what I've seen so far. Yeah, it looks, looks good. Like looks better than what was first showed. Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah, it looks like Halo. That's, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's all it all, all needs to be, really. Free to play multiplayer, which is nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But the game's free if you've got Game Pass anyway, so... That's a good point, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Which you should have, because it's great. Yep. Um, yeah, that's cool. Halo coming soon. Very soon. Uh, I've got a new Marvel game called Midnight Suns, made by the yeah. guys who made SCOM. Yeah, look cool. forward to being shit at that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that will uh, be really cool, though, I think. Uh, 2K, yeah. actually. Yeah, so it's, it's a 2K uh, game. And, yeah, I think it'll be good. Mm. I'm just not very good at those games, as, you know, we know <laughs> from when we attempted XCOM, like, more around <laughs> Yeah, yeah. XCOM 1 was all right. XCOM 2 was like, I forgot how to do video games. Yeah, <laughs> I, feel like we should, I feel like we should go back and try it again. We should. We should, we should give it another go. Yeah, I mean, God, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's like, you have a 99% chance to hit. Sweet. Miss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alien <laughs> comes along. 38% chance of hit. Heads heads are rolling. Headshot. <laughs> Critical hit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we should try Great that game, again. Though. Great game. game as well. Yeah, really good. We should try that again. Uh, cool. So, we also... Uh, it's also been announced that Saints Row, uh, or Saints Row reboot is coming in February 2022. Yeah, no gameplay, not... just a cinematic thing. That looked very Saints Rowish. It did. This could have just been a Saint. I don't think it needed to be a spin, uh, a reboot. I think they could have just done Saints Row in a different city. Yeah, Saints Row. Because that's essentially five. what it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, pretty much all new cast of characters. All new everything from the looks of things. So yeah, yeah. But it's simply just Saint titled Row. Saints Row. Yeah, that's what happens when you run out of ideas. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just uh, just do the Saints Row thing again, but make it prettier. Yeah. What? Could, what, oh, what? We need a we need a new subheading for uh, Saints Row because, um, <laughs> yeah, because numbers aren't good enough anymore. So yeah, screw <laughs> numbers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what can we call it? Oh, I don't know. Um... What's the city that it's set in? Oh, it's somewhere made up. Okay, well, why don't we just call it whatever the made-up city's called? <laughs> don't know. I don't think it's going to hit strong enough. Uh, okay, <laughs> how about we call it... How about we just call it... How about we call it Saints Row? Great idea. Let's do that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Is everybody have a game called Saints Row? Shut up. Hey. <laughs> yeah. No one asked you. <laughs> Jebediah, you suck. <laughs> 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 uh. The thing is, someone's been paid an absolute fortune to come up with that name mm. as well. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I suppose they put a question been... mark after it. Saints Row? Yeah, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's, probably, there's probably been about 10, 15 hours worth of Teams call meetings. What are we going to yeah. call it? Oh. Stressing about it. And then some guy on, or girl on six figures goes, I know, Saints Row. Oh, you're a genius. Yes, I think it is. Clarissa or whatever. You, you're <laughs> an absolute what? genius. He explains it all. <laughs> oh. Ah. Let's see what I did there. Oh. Uh, good stuff. Good times. Good times. Um, they showed us a new gameplay of the new Call of Duty. Call of Duty Vanguard. Yeah, it guess looks what? like Call of Duty. Yep, that's right. It yep. looks like Call of Duty. <laughs> How many times you like hell. recreate the opening beach sequence from Saving Private Ryan? <laughs> yeah, the boats pull a... up to the fucking beach they get off shoot some shit get shot then the game starts the credits roll Call of Duty I was just Call of Duty <laughs> 2 remake Vanguard whoa what the fuck is this brand new 
Oh, God damn it, Call of Duty, man. <laughs> yeah, so it's Call of Duty 1 and 2 and 3, and then Call of Duty World War 2 later, and now this one. Where was World at War? Which one's that say? Is that World War 1? Oh, uh, yeah. I think so, maybe? It's, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, something like that. Still a beach. Too, too many. <laughs> there is actually a beach bit in World at War. Hard. That's a difficult campaign, actually. I think I played that one, yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's yeah, an that okay was, one. People like okay, that, that one, was, actually, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was the one right after Modern Warfare, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I think I must play that one then. So essentially, they, what it was, what it would have been known as then is Call of Duty 5, but that's when they started <laughs> giving them like different names. Yeah, see, that's cool. See, Call of Duty, they've got it down. Saints Row need to take a leaf out of uh, Call of Duty's book. <laughs> Just call it anything. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, Saints Row s- Spoons. Yeah, exactly. There we go. <laughs> Just, pick, just pick a random name of my hat. Yeah. Saints Row, <laughs> Orcs Cable. <laughs> Orcs Cable. <laughs> Anything. It doesn't even Perfect. matter. Perfect. Yeah. We'll make it make sense in the trailer. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Plugs in the Orcs Cable. Music plays. Saints Row, Orcs Cable. Did it, did it, did it, did it. And it's like, yeah. It's, yeah it works. <laughs> is, um, is Matt Hardy going to be an unlockable player in uh, New Call of Duty? <laughs> oh, Vanguard, yeah. <laughs> Vanguard one just flies in. Yeah. Like a These guys pull into, the, pull into the beach in their little uh, their little boat, and then Vanguard <laughs> one like flies over the top. And then Matt Hardy, yes. <laughs> American soldiers, I knew you'd come. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. That needs to be DLC. That's, that's, totally calm. That's, a, that's, a, that's a better game. It is. Just make that. Make that. that. <laughs> Go on, Tony Khan. Make it happen. <laughs> Call of Duty Vanguard One. <laughs> Call of Hardy Vanguard One. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so <laughs> the new Super Monkey Ball game is coming out. Uh, some 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 new uh, unlockable characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, they announced Sonic and Tails a while ago. Classic Sonic and Tails. Yeah, it's very cool. They announced uh, Kazuma Kiryu from uh, Yakuza, which is very cool. funny. And they just announced, uh, speaking of Persona 5, uh, Morgana from Persona 5, who's the little cat character. Yeah. Looks like this. He looks like this. Meow. Uh, so nice. yeah, that's very cool. He plays Morgana rolling around in a ball collecting bananas. I thought there was just a new Monkey Ball game recently. And there's a remake, which is a remake of the Wii game, which wasn't great, apparently. I think there's an issue because it originally controlled the motion controls, and that right. didn't translate very well to controllers. So yeah, this is a whole new one. Surprising. It looks really cool. And cool. Uh, is it, so yeah. it's a brand new Monkey Ball game. A brand new Monkey Ball coming to everything. Cool. Literally Ooh. everything. PC, Switch, PlayStation 4, 5. Concept. It's very weird. But really, really fun. I love the game, original GameCube version. Like, like monkeys, words. enjoy balls. Well, <laughs> this one's <laughs> yeah. for you. This is Super <laughs> Monkey Ball. What does this hey. involve? Yeah, you just roll around collecting <laughs> bananas. Pretty much. Yep. We, we can make a whole franchise of this. <laughs> uh, I'm glad they did. Uh, what else we got? Uh, oh, yes. We got Horizon. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West launching in February. Another one coming in February. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. Good stuff. PS5 and PS4. Yep. Interesting they went for a PS4 version. Um, I think, you know, um, maybe it's a case that they didn't want to alienate that. Because, I mean, that install base is insanely big. Yeah, that's very true. And you know, for the for the most part, it's been very difficult to get hold of a PS5. Yeah, true. Unless you pre-ordered it like a sane person, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, so I'm thinking it's probably a case of that. I mean, it's very difficult to see PlayStation exclusives on PS4 after that. That's got to be like the PS4's. I don't want to say Horizon. Hey. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, 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 it's the sun's the sun's going down on the PS4. Yeah, it's God of War got a PS4 version. Yeah. Oh, well, what, oh, okay. Wait, which one? What the God God of War, the new God of War Ragnarok. Oh, Ragnarok. Yeah. Uh, they said yes, but they've not said yes since. Hmm. So okay. originally yes, but they've I don't know how confirmed that is. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, that's ages away as well. I think. It's, it's, I think it's, yeah, I think it's a way away. I think it's got delayed. I don't think that will see the PS4. Yeah, I don't know. I'd say. But I'm sure it'll be great either way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be really good. I, I love that game. I love God of War. Yeah, me too. Boy. So good. Boy. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what else did we get? All right, the Sherlock Moore Death Stranding director's cut. Cool. Uh, you drive a car. You've got a jetpack now. Cool. Yeah, we little... could have had all this shit before. <laughs> good AO. Yeah, but drive a car. Yeah. You could drive a car anyway. But you could try like a little, make a little racetrack. Looks like Mario Kart. It's cool. We needed jetpacks before, though. Guess the place is quicker. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll help for sure. Instead, we're just um, walking up mountains. <laughs> but for sure, I'm going to play it. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, same. And uh, also, we replaced Monster Energy Drinks with some generic brand because the brand those brand deals didn't exist anymore, I guess. Fair enough. That's probably better. <laughs> yeah. Well, they'll still be able to market that shit going forward. Yeah, to make it, make their own, make like a, its own real thing. Sell it. I'd buy it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all the biggest news coming from uh, Gamescom. Cool. And what else have we got? Oh yeah, uh, Rockstar are potentially remaking uh, GTA 3 uh, by City and San Andreas, which will be awesome. Take note. Take note. Yeah, take note. Take note. Um, but yeah, this will be awesome. I grew up playing these games. I'm sure you two did as well. Yeah. Um, I would like to see them again. All I need is joystick nicer. controls for the camera. That's yeah. all I need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me, let me drive for R2 instead of X. Oh, Jesus. Oh, good. But I tried <laughs> playing Vice City because you can download it like for what well, when it was on PS4. Yeah. Uh, but you used a fucking D pad <laughs> to turn the camera around. Oh, God. Nope. <laughs> no, I was just saying. Like a madman. Yeah. So are you insane? Like, you have this whole, whole other stick here doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and it was there the whole time that GTA Vice City was there. Yeah. What are you doing? You chose to do nothing with it. It seems silly, silly looking back now. It's like, it seems so obvious. But back then it was whole, you know, it's whole extra stick. What do we do with it? No one knows. Yeah. Oh, this <laughs> yeah. controller was made especially for Gran Turismo. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's like, what? Uh. <sighs> So yeah, dual, st- dual stick controls. I'll be beyond happy. Yeah, mm. that'd be very cool. Look okay. forward to that. Um, what else? I think that's probably about it. To be fair. Um, yeah, that's all the biggest news I can find. Cool. So yeah, good what times. Two K twenty two. Oh yeah, and I've got I've got announced for March twenty twenty two, and the Vince mm. is not happy about it. Yeah, but Vince has got a clue it. about video games, is he? He thinks all, re- all video games look like WrestleMania the arcade game. Yeah, he's clueless. He has no idea. Like, I I my... <laughs> so, hey, like, Vince, well... if you continue to release wrestlers, we can't bring this game out. Yeah, we have no characters left, so we need to make new ones to replace all the ones you got rid of. Yeah. <laughs> WWE Performance Center 2K22. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, uh, his hair being turned out to be good. Uh, we'll pull bad a little more because the, the it's got to be very stressful. Nice. Yeah, they look very pretty, very graphically, very nice. Yeah. Well, they, well. they keep they keep harping on about stunning graphics. So if it yeah. comes out now and looks like shit, <laughs> this group. never never trust in a never trust in taglines ever again. <laughs> yeah. But no, it'll be, it'll be good. I have faith that it'll be good. You have faith that it'll be good. I think so. Two get okay. need two get need them redemption. It needs to be good or. I think they're done. This but, could, I think this could be the last yeah, WWE game from 2K. Yeah, quite possibly. Unless it turns out to be completely amazing and blows people away, uh, then yeah, I, I can see that as well. Then EA get hold of it, and it's gold houses all around, baby. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all the microtransactions. <laughs> yeah. WWE Ultimate Team, or they'll call it Survivor Series or something. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> where you, you get packs and just... Outcome 100 Heath Slayers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. EA, WWE EA 22. No, they'd just call it WWE, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. WWE 12. Whatever. EA Sports, <laughs> WWE 21 or whatever. Or they'll number it like they do with the UFC games. Yeah. 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 Saints rotate note. Yeah. Let's call it <laughs> WWE, the game. Don't you have... <laughs> well, it works, doesn't it? You know what it is. It yeah, it's not yeah. that bad. Actually. <laughs> have you got uh, you know, a clueless parent walks into a shop at Christmas? Have you got um, have you got that WWE game? Do you mean WWE the game? Yes, that, yeah, that's, that must be. 
That's a good ninety pounds, please. It comes yeah. with a lock of Roman Reigns' hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Special edition now. Now we have Reigns. It comes with a yeah. limited edition picture of Ric Flair. Um, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want that version. It's for my kid. It wasn't, it wasn't him. It was just someone that looks and dresses like him. Yeah, yeah. looks exactly same like hair. him. Yeah, same hair, same everything. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Indeed. <laughs> oh man! Right. right. Um, <laughs> she's just wet. Oh, that Finn, Um We've got a we've got a heap to do, haven't we? We have a heap. Yeah, instead, of a, heap. Heap, instead of a gaming heap, it is indeed a wrestling heap. heap. On this heap, we have WWE legends. Legends who are not full-time wrestlers, for the most part. Except for maybe one. Um, so yeah, we're going to rank them from legend to crap. And uh, you can let us know if you agree or disagree or whatever. Bear with this me while is going to be agree. divisive. Yeah, hell yeah, it is. All right, so I've got a... Uh, a gaggle of superstars down here. Gaggle. A gaggle. <laughs> so I put them in, in, in put them in a spot in a random order. Uh, so we start off with the um, the Dwayne. Dwayne, the Dwayne, Dwayne. Um, uh, legend. Well, I mean, sorry. he would want to be in great because he's the great one. Oh, uh, yeah, the great one, but, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we'll put him in legend. Yeah, he is. He's the rock. He's, you know, he is a legend. He's one of the reasons I got into wrestling in the first place. Cool. Same. Yes. Along with him and Stone Cold. Yeah. Maybe a wrestling fan. Why have we got two <laughs> Hogans in there? Because they're different versions of Hogan. We'll get to that later. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, next up, we have the man himself, Ric Flair. Based on recent events, there's only <laughs> one place for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But again, he's, he's, you know, a weird old man now, but back in the day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He was a legend. Things wouldn't be how they are without guys like Ric Flair. So, no, that's Agreed. absolutely it. And that's he's, uh, yeah, he's you know had a bit of a sketchy time. <laughs> <in the re> <laughs> but <laughs> Ric Flair still out here eating pussy, and we all appreciate him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair play. <laughs> Next <laughs> up, another legend, surely, The Undertaker, the recently retired Dead Man. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Absolute legend. legend. Absolutely. Yeah, had the biggest undefeated stick WrestleMania. There's Lost different versions two. of The Undertaker, though. You could have done that. Oh. I could have done that. I could have done that. I could have had a Maybe, that's for, there. maybe that's for another time. Yeah. Next time. Next time. Okay. Went with the different iterations of The Undertaker. Mm. Oh, the good legend. Good there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's uh, Mark Halloway when he first debuted. Um, but yeah, legend. Um, you know, but him losing at WrestleMania to Brock Lesnar is still one of the biggest shock moments for me. Oh god, uh, in yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I'll never forget our reaction. Yeah, it's like we thought it was the boss it was. No, that was that's a mistake, surely. You know, we're all so sitting he's there. He's hurt. He must be Shit, <laughs> the, the Undertaker's gonna win, and then he's gonna kick out of the F five. Never no. happened. Nope. We're like everyone in the crowd, just, just stunned. Stunned silence. It, it was. It was. Um, <laughs> Yeah, what a moment. Yeah. Looking at the pictures here, this is going to get real dicey at some point. <laughs> uh, yeah, it really will. <laughs> no spoilers. Uh, right, next up we have Undertaker's brother, quote unquote brother, uh, Kane. Do you feel um, what would he be great, you reckon? I don't think he, he got, never got quite to the same heights as The Undertaker. No. Everyone um, knows who he is. Yeah. Mm. You know, oh God, this, so this is where it gets tough. Because there'll be people screaming at us now, listening to this, being like, it's obviously a legend. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't I, oh, I don't want to make the call. Yeah, I don't think, as good as he is, and I love Kane, I don't think he's quite on that same level as an Undertaker or Ric Flair. Mm. Okay. I'd, I mean. I'd be interested to see who else goes in legend, and maybe he goes... If you were to then rank the legends, where, yeah, like is he like the bot? Because he's like the bottom end of possibly the bottom end of legend, but he's like at the very top of great. He's yeah. so because the the character's great, and you know the the early early years were were amazing, and then I think it kind of went 
a bit uh, when he took yeah, the mask very, off. Yeah, very sort of mix and match with Kane. Yeah, and then obviously yeah. you had corporate Kane and all of that, but then he just seems like an absolute stand-up bloke, you know, great <laughs> guy and all that sort yeah, of thing. So it's like, there were some truly you know, and, excellent Kane moments. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the debut, it's just... And I think as well, hasn't Undertaker recently said that he's he's the, the greatest big guy? I think he's blowing his mind firstly it. there, but I think he's, <laughs> he's definitely one up, of course. Of course. Of course. You know, there's no yeah. doubt in his talent. I think, you know, in terms of his WWE run, I think some of some of it was just okay. Like, I was never sort of hyped to see Kane. No, the, I mean, there was some days, cool, yeah. Yeah, there was some cool stuff. There was... There was he wasn't overly terrible at the comedy stuff as well, either, was he? He kind of like adapted yes. a little bit there. So uh, it's a tough one. Let's yeah, keep well, him we can move, Yeah, we can always move stuff around later. But yeah, yeah for now, yeah, let's go for it. We'll keep him in great for now. Uh, another great uh, is the Gobbledy Googa. Crap. He's, move on. Yeah. <laughs> He's still some <laughs> former 24 7 champion, the Gobbledy Googa. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> uh, yeah, the well, Survivor Series. Yep, what's in the big egg? Could be anything. What could it be? Oh, it's a big turkey. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Now, when you think <laughs> about it now, that's just the most WWE thing of all time. <laughs> it really is, yeah. Oh, awful. <laughs> awful. Pretty bad. Uh, next up, we have Trish Stratus. Uh, a highlight back from the Diva days, or pre Diva days, even. Pre Diva days, yeah. Pre Diva. Uh, for me, I think she goes into Legend because, in my opinion, her and Lita sort of changed the way that we look at women's wrestling. Obviously, you know, the first women to main event Raw, and mm. they really sort of elevated women actually wrestling into instead of sort of the way it was back then in the Attitude Era, where it was sort of gravy bowl matches and, you know, Brian Panties match. matches, matches, all that yeah. kind of stuff. But they took it to another level and actually had great wrestling matches you know, whilst exchanging the then WWF Women's Championship. So yeah. for me, um, she oh. she is a legend. Yeah, I would agree with that. Because uh... I feel like she's a game changer. She she walked into WWE as like this, you know, the archetypical blonde, you know, bimbo that WWE <laughs> would, you, that you would like to see with her clothes off. You know, I can't sugarcoat <laughs> yeah, it any more than that. She's part of a tag team she... called T and A. Not yeah, TNA, so she TNA, was the manager for Test and yeah. Albert. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, and then she surpassed all expectations, and that's what makes her a legend. She she took, um, you know, uh, you know, a stereotype and changed it totally. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. Uh, next up, we have uh, two bones of the Hulk. We have classic uh, Hulk Hogan, and we have, of course, Hollywood Hulk Hogan from the NWO. Hulk Hogan's the reason I'm a wrestling fan. Yeah, that's fair. And, you know, Hulk Hogan is one of the, you know, one of the biggest, you know, household names. Everyone knows who Hulk Hogan is. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, you know who Hulk Hogan is, I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And with NWO Hogan, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, so he'll turn that people never thought they'd see. Um, People thought it was a horrible idea, would never work. And then it turned it into one of the biggest factions of all time, which is still, you know, duplicated these days yeah the greatest heel turn of all time changed yeah. again that changed things that that basically showed that, that that's that's one of the moments that changed wrestling for the better yeah you know um because before it was very sort of popcorny and 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 kiddish and and you know and stuff like that it was all these big characters and everybody was colorful and all that kind of thing and then you know the NWO thing, it sort of blurred the lines between what was real and what was fake because with the internet not being around at the time, we didn't know that Hall wasn't, you know, just a WWE guy invading WCW. So he goes yeah. for Nash. And then when, you know, so that sort of thing, it, it really sort of gave it some, it made wrestling cool. Mm. That's what, yeah, that's, that's the word it. I was looking for. It made wrestling cool. Very cool. NWO t-shirts everywhere. It was just cool. It was like the anti-establishment and, you know, it suited its time and um, yeah, NWO Hogan, Hollywood Hulk Hogan uh, was the beginning of that. It was cool to like Hulk Hogan again because it wasn't, 
<laughs> time, you know, that the red and yellow stuff was really, uh, you know, it was coming to an end. You know, people weren't yeah. feeling it anymore. They wanted something different. And then uh, Hogan, you know, Hollywood Hulk Hogan came along and yeah, everything changed. Yeah. Very cool. And now we've got guys like the Bullet Club doing that sort of, you know, an art yeah. and a march to the NWO. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Love it. Um, yeah, so that's Hulk Hogan. Uh, next up, we have Bautista or Bautista, but only you ask. Um, um, I have to be honest. If it was, oh. I wouldn't. I I don't think he's great or a legend. No, I wouldn't put him in legend at least. I wouldn't. I think put he's him very in good. Great. I think he's. I think he's okay. Yeah. Decent. I would say. Oh yeah, for me, I'd, I'd probably be a bit decent. Yeah. He's your typical WWE superstar. <laughs> yeah, big guy. The Deacon Batista. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Comes in carrying a fucking collection box for, for <laughs> Brother Devon. Okay. And he's a big a dude. Yeah, look, um, I like Batista and what he's done outside of wrestling is great. Obviously, you know, he's trans. He's sort of um, uh, transitioned Transition. from wrestling to, to movies and now he's a big star. And that's great. But... Yeah. You know, I don't think he was, you know, he wasn't fondly received when he came back that time and he was wearing lime no. green shorts and all that <laughs> shite. Yeah. Um, so for me, Batista isn't a, a legend and I don't think he was ever great. I think he was just decent. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, as you say, nobody really wanted to come back, which I think says a lot. Like yeah. if you know, so nobody like was any... scrambling for it. No one was chanting Batista in arenas for seven years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like if Dennis Dickey came back um, just to, to make an appearance, people you, you get cheered. You know, people love and didn't say yeah. If Batista came back, people wouldn't care. Like, like, like a, a pop when he first came back, and then just people would just forget. And when he came back the second time to challenge Triple H, I enjoyed yeah. that. That Batista was yeah. much better. Yeah, because um, it was it was a surprise. Like when oh, yeah, he attacked Ric Flair backstage and all that stuff, and <laughs> give me what I want. That, yeah. Yeah, that that oh. was good. That was really good. But um, in general, <sighs> yeah, decent. Yeah, agreed. Uh, right. Next up, you have the man called Sting. Legend. Straight to no, the top. Sting. Straight to yeah, the top. One hundred percent. Still and going today. Yeah. The guy rules now. Yeah, he's still cool. Still amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's, 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 the first, he's, he's the first wrestler I sort of like. You say you got into wrestling because of Hogan. I remember watching Sting on ITV, WCW, mm. and being like, "This blonde haired dude's awesome." Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the way that Sting has been able—I mean, he's kept himself in amazing shape. Yeah, he'll yeah. still go now. He's Sting's awesome. Sting, Sting fucking rules. It's yeah. best. Um, yeah, so I wasn't a, a WCW guy back then. I was, you know, full on WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, so I missed out on his glory days. But, you know, looking back and watching the matches from back then, you know, they still hold up. And, you know, seeing what he's doing now in, in uh, AEW, playing a bit Darby Allen, which was genius, um, it's just great. Yeah, he's a great, just a great wrestler, great guy. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Well done, WWE, uh, for fucking that up. Yeah, good job, idiot. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have uh, it's him, it's him, it's D D P. I didn't quite work. <laughs> <laughs> it's D D Pim. Pim. <laughs> um, D D P obviously started very late. Yeah. Um, you know, I think for some of the stuff he's done outside of wrestling, uh, yeah. um, for okay. wrestlers, getting them mm. back on track with D D P yeah. yoga and things like that, I think that's awesome. And the guy. Yeah. The guy's, you know, absolute salt of the earth. Uh, in terms of WCW run was good. WWE yeah. run was not good. Yeah, turn me to a weird stalker. Stalking on the second way. Yeah, so <laughs> I I think DDP is decent. Yeah. Guys, I, I know you're going to be sitting there at home thinking, what the fuck, what are you talking about? All these guys are legends. This is just <laughs> our opinion. Which This is literally just our opinion, but this is not going to be yeah, officially but... ranked on the WWE network, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, obviously these guys are all great. They're all legends in their, in their own right, for the most part. Yeah, uh, this is exactly. just ranking yeah. how their tier of legendary, basically. There you go. Yeah. Next up, we have. I'm going to assume goes straight to legend. Uh, 
a heartbreak kid, Sean Michaels. Yep. A heartbreak old man. Straight <laughs> in. Straight to the top. There's no, yeah. you know, Mr. WrestleMania had some of the greatest matches of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, at WrestleMania with The Undertaker. And he's, you know, he's just been, he was just always so consistent. Yeah. You know, yeah. one of the, the first ever Grand Slam champion. Uh, when yeah. he was, yeah. when he, you know, he had the European, he won everything. He won it all. Tag team titles, WWE title, European Championship, Intercontinental Championship, Women's Championship, all of it. He, he did it all. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Women's Tag Team Cruiserweight Belt. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. And part of DX as well, of course. One of the biggest factions. Absolutely. Again, in WWE. One, of the, one of the things that made wrestling cool again. Yeah. DX. Yep. Absolutely. We tried Big Flair, and Big Flair never wrestled again. Never wrestled again. Don't, don't think never. about it. Never ever. I mean that we, we'll forget the will. Saudi Saudi version of Sean Michaels. We'll forget that. Yeah, we would. Yeah, who? Such a bold, show, bold Sean Michael, Michaels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, it's Taz. What do you put very back in Taz? It's a mission machine. Whatever he called himself. I was always a big fan of Taz. Um, you were a huge Taz fan. Yeah, it didn't work for him in WWE um, yeah. in terms of wrestling. Obviously, moved on. He's had a great career. You know, being in. Uh, an analyst and a color commentator and all that sort of stuff. Um, ECW work, unbelievable. So good. Obviously, that's what got him to WWE in the first place. Uh, I would say, I would say for his ECW run alone, decent. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. That's very fair. I, didn't, I wouldn't take the ECW run into account, but you have a good point. Yeah, he's great. Probably an ECW legend. If you want to do it. Easily an ECW legend. No, yeah. Yeah, Big yeah. Time. There's no, there's no probably about it. Yeah, he is. But um, yeah, decent, decent. Great on the mic as well. Such a yeah, such, such a good. great talker. It's still a great talker now. Obviously, leading uh, Team Taz in AEW and stuff. But yeah, um, I think yeah. And again, this goes down to WWE. I think you know he had some bad luck with injuries and stuff as well. But the WWE run was so poorly done. You know, uh, he came in, destroyed Kurt Angle in his first match at the Royal Rumble, and it was awesome. But then after that. You know, it's very difficult to sort of pin down anything memorable that Taz really did in WWE. Um, you know, we had a few with Jerry Lawler, uh, which saw the debut of Raven, and that's someone else that was a missed opportunity in WWE. But oh, yeah. you could talk about Big the missed opportunities in WWE all day long. <laughs> but um, Taz is definitely one of them. But his ECW run was, was excellent. Yeah. Cool. Next up, we have a man who is part of Too Cool and an attempted murderer. Uh, Rikishi. <laughs> <laughs> he did it for The Rock, though. He did, he did it for The Rock, yeah. For The Rock. <laughs> I did it for The Rock. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Steve, what do you reckon? The heel turn wasn't good. No, the, the heel, heel turn was good. The heel turn was terrible because it's not him, because it, it goes back to that thing that we talk about where some people are just suited to be heels because they're probably a dickhead in real life. Um, <laughs> and I don't think Rikishi is. Sound bloke. You know, he, he seems that way anyway. So, I don't know. I mean, the two cool stuff, when you were like 13, 14, that was kind of like funny. Now you watch it and go, Ugh. Um <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a Hall of Famer, but I don't think that makes him a legend necessarily. Um, yeah. I'd go decent, you know. It was a it was a fun character. He had fun with it, and you know, he he was he was part of the Attitude Era, which is you know, and he was a big he was a big player in the Attitude Era. It really was. So it was, yeah, go decent. Yep. I love the yeah, Rikishi driver. Even now, I love it. Yeah, it's very great. Cool and yeah, as you say, he's always you know one of those tables for back then. I was remembered, you know, him fondly back in the day. Yeah, I was a yeah. Rikishi fan. Obviously, you know, he was, um, he, he, there was other gimmicks that he tried prior to being Rikishi as well. He obviously, yeah. he was the Sultan, um, as yeah. well, We're wearing, carrying Cross's current gear, but, uh, <laughs> in a little while, but yeah, um, you know, it's very difficult to, to, you can't be harsh to Rikishi, I don't think. I think no. on average would be a bit of an insult towards him. So yeah. I think, yeah, yeah he's right. decent. True. And, you know, a lot of the memories from the Attitude Era do revolve around Rikishi. So yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Agreed. Next up, we have, the 11th one of the world, China? The 11th? 9th. 9th, 8th, 9th, 11th. 8th wonder of the world, China. One of the wonders. 
Well, the eighth wonder of the world was Andre the Giant, wasn't it? <laughs> That's right, yeah. That, so, and course, China was sense. the ninth. Yeah. So you're, really you, you're, you're hovering over legend there, but for me, um, uh, I mean, it's a, this is a real difficult one because, in a way, China changed the game as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think, yeah, I'm not going to say man, lines as uh, Trish. Yes, but. I mean, she, kind of. She, yeah, I mean, I'm going to leave this one to you guys because. <laughs> I think uh, my my opinion on China is probably different to yours. I didn't, I wasn't, I, th- I mean this, you know, without, I'm trying not to sound like a dick with this. I, I didn't like it when she was in the women's division. Okay. I have to be honest. Because she'd already established her, herself as being able to tangle with uh, the men, beating Jeff Jarrett for the IC title, that kind of thing, being in the Royal Rumble uh, and all that kind of stuff. To then fight in ivory of right to censor WrestleMania, tiny, tiny ivory against massive, massive China. It just, it, I just don't feel that it, it worked the way they probably wanted it to. That's fair. I think the reason, you know, I think Legend is because, you know, she was able to fight with, you know, the big guys. It wasn't just like, a, you know, a supermodel there rolling around with everyone. She was like an actual, you know, a beefy wrestler lady, mm-hmm. and you know she could she could fight with the with the men. She wasn't just you know a little a little I, girl. She was like a big proper actual wrestler, you know. Yeah, I mean, to... you're right. To be fair, I mean, you know, it was it was, it was unlike anything we really ever saw before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's my way. I think. But what do you think, Steve? You can be the, the decider. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm torn between great and legend because I think legend because she she you know she was she changed the game and she was she was unique as well um mm, big time. in that sense uh, and she did playboy so you know fair 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 cracks to her so um <laughs> oh, and more <laughs> and more <laughs> her services <laughs> the industry are second to none um <laughs> uh, I'm, i don't know um i don't know it's one of them things i think I don't want to get too analytical about this, but like if you're putting her in legend, then doesn't Kane then go into legend? I don't know. Mm, uh, top end of great. Top end of great? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll see who else is in great. Yeah, we're we'll, we'll great for now. Yeah. I think it's a, shame, it's a shame what happened to her in, in terms of how she left WWFE, whatever it was, by the time she left. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, you know, she had a lot of troubles afterwards in her, in her personal life. But, um, yeah, it's a shame, but yeah, great. I, I, I would like you say it'd be an insult to put her any lower. I think to just say she yeah. was decent would be a bit of an insult. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think I think a high grade is fair. I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Next up, we have uh, Papa Shango, the uh, voodoo man himself. Mm. <laughs> what do you reckon? Um. Such a weird gimmick, man. So it's a Very legendary strange. gimmick. It truly is. Yeah. Obviously, you know, Charles Wright, he's done a lot of different things. You know, one of his is up next as well. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he's been Papa Shango, Karma, the fighting machine, uh, the Godfather. Um, Charles Wright himself is uh, is a is a good wrestler. Mm. Yeah. Um, if we're looking at the gimmick... Um, I would say it's bang average. Yeah, because it's stupid. It's it's fucking <laughs> stupid. Like you know when he's when the Ultimate Warriors there coughing stuff up and oh, all yeah. that kind of nonsense. Um, it's just weird. It's like the boogeyman, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. It's a precursor to the fiend. What are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just my my way of looking at it. But yeah, you know, I, I, if we were gonna, if, you know, if we were gonna go on, you know, everyone's a legend, like you said, you know, all these are legends in their own certain ways. Papa Shango, the gimmick is is legendary, mm. but it doesn't mean it was good. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd stick around bang average as well to prepare. It wasn't terrible, you know, it's still memorable. People have fond memories of it, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't up there. That's fair. Yeah. Cool. Do you agree with that, Steve? Yeah, let's go for that. Yeah. Cool. Next up, we have a completely different wrestler. There's no relation to him whatsoever. 
Imagine. Um, <laughs> the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> With his hose. Um, <laughs> look, a lot, you know, go on, Steve. I was going to say, it was just, it was, <laughs> it was the epitome of the Attitude Era, wasn't it? <laughs> it really was. One of his hoses, a former hardcore champion. Yeah. I like <laughs> as well when on WrestleMania 2000, if you are the Godfather, he comes down with one of the women. It just says with Ho. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Grab yo. I mean, I mean in the most respectable way possible. I started to yeah. call on that because that's what they call them in WWE. It's not because what well, I think. Internet, please don't cancel me. <laughs> um, it's hard. It, yeah, I mean it. <laughs> When you look back at the gimmick now, it's 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 dicey as fuck. It's but, broken. Yeah, <laughs> very dicey. I don't know, man. I don't know. <sighs> I'd probably put it about average. To be fair, still memorable, still fond memories of it. Nowadays, but at the time, it was a good character, I think, or at least an entertaining character. Maybe not a good character. I mean, but... I feel like that's the one he's most known for. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I see champion. Yeah. Came down with ice, ice tea at WrestleMania 2000. <laughs> Pimp drop was his uh, finish. Oh, yeah. Ho train. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's so many things in so many good qualities. Uh, so good. All right, we'll keep him where he is. It's fine. Yeah, mm. that's fine. Sorry, uh, <laughs> Next up, we have Lisa. Legend, Legend for the same reasons as Trish. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. Again, an absolute trailblazer. You know, she. You know, young girls wanted to be like Lita when they watched wrestling. It was like, you know, it was a, and you know, this is, I don't, and this is not meant in a sexist way, but watching wrestling was a boy's thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, but then, you know, with, with Trish and Lita coming into it, girls started taking notice like, Oh, I want to be like them. I want to, you know, I'm in, and that sort of thing. Um, and again, you know, it goes back to the, the, the legendary rivalry that Trish and Lita had and the great matches they had over the women's championship. And, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I feel that Lita is uh, is well and truly a legend. Yeah, I agree. Great music as well. Great yeah, great music. Great things yeah. are. Um, yeah, you would agree with that. Legend. Cool. Next up, we have Dejete <laughs> from oh, Halloween God. Havoc. What? <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> That'll do. Thing is, that's not even peak shit. WCW. Yeah. <laughs> that's coming up I've just seen the picture <laughs> yeah the Yeti why do they keep saying only Yeti 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 yep um, he's firmly in crap yep <laughs> legend legendary crap uh, next up we have the big boss man Look, not so big there in in shape of boss man <laughs> uh, i'm a big big boss man fan me too big boss. always thought he was great um really good big man and he he played that gimmick he was the big boss man yeah um i would i would put him in great yeah I agree. Dead, he's dead <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just so good you know he, <laughs> he went he went away for a long time came back <laughs> still looking basically the same when he was sort of like the corporation's enforcer and yeah. he was just he was just so good at it yeah uh, until he got killed by the undertaker rip rest in peace yeah but literally rest ray. in peace ray uh, yeah yeah ray yeah. trailer uh but yeah so. for me an all-time great yep i agree yeah, yeah great cool uh, next up, we have Olympic gold medalist himself. Won the Olympics with a broken, bring, broken freaking neck. The milkman, Kurt Angle. Uh, he's he's, he's has to be a legend. Has to be. Yeah, surely. He's great. Great. You, does you, see his wrestler. Yeah, great yeah. comedy guy as well. Very funny. Amazing. Yeah, he's a really great comedy guy. Um, yeah. Just just in general. Again, he's one of these. He's one of these that changed the game. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he came yeah. from the, the the world of real sports. <laughs> he was an actual wrestler, not a sports entertainer. You know, he mm -hmm. went to WCW uh, to check out their show uh, when he was invited by Paul Heyman, saw the hardcore stuff, and wasn't into it. Was then out. invited to WWE. Excuse me. Um, 
and yeah, you know, he, he took to it like nobody else has ever taken to it. Yeah, you hear that a lot, don't you? From from other wrestlers that say no one took to the business like like Kurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. And again, another one of my favorites when I was watching it back in the day. You know, Stone Cold Rock Kurt Angle. Yeah, just so many legendary matches with Kurt Angle, yeah. and it's just so good. TNA Kurt Angle was great and hard as nails. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's just yeah, just absolutely amazing. Yeah, and Jason Jordan's dad. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> good times. Good times. Let's fly next through up. some of these. Let's do. Let's do a bit of a flash round here. Yeah, good point. Good winning. Winning on time. So next up, next up, we have uh, Edge's wife, Beth Phoenix. Mrs. Edge. Uh, Mrs. Edge. Great. Yeah, great. Decent. I would say. Great. Yeah, yeah, great. Definitely a highlight from the Divas division. Divas. Rest of Divas. Yeah. yeah great. Uh, next up, we have the Macho Man. Oh yeah, Randy Savage. Legend, surely. Yeah. Bone saw. Yeah. Bone, Bone saw is ready. Bone saw is ready. <laughs> uh, Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> Hulk Hogan's rival. And yeah. Again, you no. know, when when I started watching wrestling, it was Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. You know, they were the they were the big selling toys. That you know, I've got a, an Ultimate Warrior wrestling buddy right in front of me now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Still in great condition from the eighties as well. Go me. The Ultimate Very Warrior. Cool. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> next up is what happens when you order uh, the Ultimate Warrior of Wish dot com. The Money Gate. Who? The Money Gate. Do you remember, remember him? No. W- no. WCW's yeah. WCW's version of the Ultimate Warrior. The Renegade. Prom- yeah, they promised they were teasing the Ultimate Warrior, promised the ultimate surprise, made people think it's <laughs> gonna be Ultimate Ultimate Warrior. Then Renegade runs out. We doing the exact same stick as the Ultimate Warrior. Looking as fake Kane and Diesel, uh, fake um, Diesel and uh, Pretty much. Jesus. And uh, yeah, just uh, Ultimate Warrior but played by someone else. And yeah, shit. the renegade. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he has to be in crap. Poor guy. I mean, he's set up to <laughs> fail pretty much. Yeah. You know. It's I a, mean, it's a baffling idea. Yeah. You're gonna be like the Ultimate Warrior, but shit. Yeah. What? <laughs> so bizarre. Sorry, uh, next up, yeah, sorry, renegade. Nice try. Uh, next up, we have the Great Carly. Crap. I'm gonna go. I wouldn't put him as, as low down as the Renegade, but I would back him in lacking personally. Um, yeah, I mean he's lacking in walking ability is uh, <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely yeah. a struggle. You know what? If <laughs> I, I uh, yeah, lacking's fine. I'm not gonna go into it. It's no point. <laughs> he <laughs> had great Carly. He had some memorable moments in wrestling. Um, in India, that yeah. dude's pretty much god. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty yeah. much. No, I get it. I get that. Okay. So to yeah. our Indian fans, we're sorry. He's a legend to you. We get it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Next up, we have Rob. I have my hand tangled. Rob, man, damn. ETW and WWE champion. champion. I didn't want to do that as far as I remember. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Oh, what do you reckon? Uh, That's a tough one. Um, He had gr- he had good runs in ECW and WWE mm. and TNA. I just just for I mean it, that it, 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 that's actually a really difficult one. Mm. Yeah, and he has two wives somehow, or two girlfriends. Yeah. Probably that works. Yeah, so for that he's a legend. <laughs> yeah, legend. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think here? This is a really difficult one for me. I feel like I, I feel like it's it's legend. I really yeah, do. I I do as well. To be honest. Uh, I do love Rob Van Dam. Great Not Bob... on yeah, yeah, they had great matches. I, you know, a big Rob Van Dam fan back in the day. I'm not saying quite... he's like Mount Rushmore, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> I, I don't think I've quite put him as as, far, as high as you know the Rock, etc. But I do think he's great. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Next up, we have Sable, who's famous for not wearing many clothes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Brock Lesnar's way. I mean, gorgeous. <laughs> uh, back yeah. in the day. Um, did some good stuff um, with Marvel- marvelous Mark Miro. True, uh, but beyond that, okay. not overly that, not overly memorable. You like, you know who she is, but you don't really care. So bang yeah. up, just fine. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Next up, we go. the greatest WCW champion, Surprise. heavyweight champion, David Arquette. No. Not even a good actor, just crap. <laughs> just just <laughs> crap, all, all around the crap. <laughs> uh, next up we have Mighty Molly or Molly Holly uh, Molly Holly great 
Yeah. yeah. It's great. All of Aimer. Well deserved. <laughs> um, also, we have the Hurricane. Stand back. <laughs> There's a Hurricane coming through. Um, <laughs> decent. Yeah. Decent, yeah. Love over his rover. Over his rover, but, you know, decent. Yeah. Uh, next up, can you dig it, sucker? Da, 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 da. Five time, five time, five time champion. His shit opinions aside, we'll give him a legend. <laughs> yeah, crap yeah. opinions. Shucky ducky think... quack quack can get in the fucking bin, but <laughs> otherwise, Book T from a wrestling <laughs> perspective, absolute legend. Yeah. 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 yeah, five time, five time. Greatest promo ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, we have as a wrestler, Vince that McMahon. That picture. That picture. <laughs> Um, Vince McMahon goes into Vince legend. Vince McMahon is a legend for his on-screen character alone. He's the greatest heel of all time. I yeah. agree. As a character, as a yeah. Former WWE champion, former ECW champion. <laughs> used to wear a do rag. Said the N word on TV. Uh, you know, there was no stopping Vince McMahon at one point. But he's the greatest heel of all time. Yeah. There will. They, I don't. I, I don't believe that anybody will ever top being an on-screen heel. Um, you know, as better than Vince McMahon. No, yeah, I, I agree. I agree, and I, and I don't, and I, I genu- genuinely don't think Austin gets as big as he did without Vince. No, without that hit. Like Austin was great, obviously before all of that, but I don't. Without think that feud, without Austin that feud, is... Austin's still yeah. great, but Austin yeah, but isn't course. the Aust- oh, You know, he was he beat his boss up. You know, that was cool mm-hmm. as shit. And yeah, that was, why, the thing. that was the thing, wasn't it? It was kicking the shit out of his boss. But Vince McMahon, he really, Vince, yeah, Vince McMahon's the greatest heel of all time. Yeah, easily. Yep, I agree. Greatest with that. on-screen heel of all time. Great character. Um, and now he draws on his eyebrows with a pencil. So, yep, <laughs> great boss as well, apparently. Yeah, great. Right. Right. Oh. <laughs> next up we have his daughter, the Queen. Um, Terrible arrangements music. Yeah. Um, but again, she plays a great on-screen right. character. Yeah, and it's it's hard to argue against that. Um, she's not a legend. No, uh, but I would, uh, you know, it's hard. I would say she's great. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, she's hovering between decent and great. But I think as um, an on-screen character, that there aren't many better in terms of authority figures. Yeah, you got a many point. Many try, many fail. Yeah, and she's around in the attitude here as well with uh, Triple H and the she likes. She's the test of time, dude. I mean, I know yeah. she's the boss's daughter and whatnot, but, you know. She still boils piss as well. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, with this next one, Finn. <laughs> the mantle. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, you know where that goes. <laughs> <laughs> right there, <laughs> <I'm in>. <laughs> uh, One of the weird gimmicks from back in the day. Jesus. Uh, next up. Stone Cold, Steve Austin, Chili McFreeze. <laughs> Straight in the You know? <laughs> uh, Very top of, the... of legend for me. Yeah, the top of the, the top. Great, the greatest. Yeah. Greatest Same of all here. time? As a, as, a pers- as, a personal pre- as a personal preference, it's because of when I really got into wrestling. I always, I, I kind of have this debate with myself a lot. <laughs> is it The Rock or is it Austin? Because, because purely back, because I wasn't really watching wrestling when Hogan and Savage and all that were, mm. were, the, were the, but you know who they are. Um, yeah, it kind of, yeah, it's between them two for me. Uh, and I think I think Austin just edges it. That's fair enough. Yeah, I agree with that. They're both great. Like, you couldn't, couldn't have, you know, to work without Austin in some respects. And vice versa, probably. And vice versa, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. Well, probably my favorite wrestler of all time. Fair enough. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's and you know, there's definitely worse to have. <laughs> yeah. Um, next up, Mark Henry. Still around in AEW, doing commentary. Decent. Decent. Love the Hall yeah, of think... Pain run. Loved it. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. That's exactly how you book a big man like Mark Henry. Pink yeah. suit. Absolutely. <laughs> Pink suit as well. Uh, next up, another legend, surely. Yeah. Yeah. Straight Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. Of course. People still, you know, replicate him now. Oh, Brock Splash is absolute, le- absolute legend, Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, everyone does a Brock, Brock Splash. It's because of Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, legend. Uh, next up, we have his cousin, also in AEW, managing. Um, Isn't it his nephew? His yeah, 
I can't remember who it is. But yeah, he's in AW doing stuff. Chavo Guerrero. Um, yeah, Chavo. Uh, decent. Uh, decent. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, you know what? He's done it all, though. He's been, you know, everywhere. Uh, he wrestled in loads of different places. You know, WCW, through WWE, Lucha Underground. Obviously, now he's in AEW. Yeah, he's done it all, man. He's a uh, good wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. Next up, we have the Boogeyman. Oh, <laughs> bang up. Lacking. Lacking, yeah. Lacking. lacking, yeah. Very cool looking. but <laughs> Not as cool as Papa Shango, though. No, no, not as cool as Papa Jungo. Nah. His gimmick was eating worms. And then, yeah. Yeah. Gross. Uh, next up, we have Goldust, last seen in WWE and then never seen again. Who knows where he is now? It's a mystery. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great. Great. Yeah. 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 He, he took that character and ran with it. He was, did it really well. Oh, my God. He made the most of a shit situation that he was playing. <laughs> he really did, yeah. It's amazing. And um, for that, it's one of the most legendary characters of all time one of the yeah. greatest characters of all time I don't, I don't, I don't I, I mean I don't see him as a, a as a legend not quite uh, but he's there. definitely an all time great yeah mm. agreed still great now I'm in phenomenal shape yeah good stuff next up we have Michael Cole as a wrestler not as a commentator uh, great commentator um, terrible wrestler yeah <laughs> it was a bad gimmick at the time bad feud just bad everything <laughs> Um, he did he did the best did the best he could with the camera stuff, but it's, it just didn't work. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, next up we have Repo Man, another one of those weird gimmicks from back in the day. Where everyone had to have a job. Average, we get that high? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, but lacking. All right, lacking. What do, okay. What do you think, Steve? <laughs> lacking. Repo Man. Lacking. Cool. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, Ivory. Decent. Decent. I think I agree with that. I had a cool one in Rights of Sensor. Is where I know her from. Yeah. You're not thinking that? No, I was just looking at who else was in, like, the other re- the f- other female wrestlers that were in great. Yeah, decent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, next up, the Ripple H. Legend. Uh, Townsley. Legend, of course. Unbelievable heel. Yep, yeah. great heel. Uh, right, well, let's say runs NXT, maybe not so much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Did a great job at NXT until, you know, potentially coming soon. Well, basically, Nick, Nick Khan said that it was going to be spearheaded by Triple H still. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I hope it stays at least somewhat decent. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, Triple H is great. Uh, next up, we have, of course, I forgot his name. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. Jake the Snake Roberts. There he is. Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> it took, it took a while for my face kicking there. Of course, we've got. Oh, I forgot his name. <laughs> Snake Man. Snake Man. <laughs> Jake the Snake Roberts, of course. Still around um, today in AEW. One of, the, one of the greatest minds in professional wrestling. One of the greatest talkers. Um, just psychologically understood. He was just. It, to be honest, Jake the Snake Roberts was well ahead of his well, well ahead of his time. Um, yeah. He he just got it, you know. Yeah, I know he's had his demons, um, but a lot, of, you know, a lot of people. Uh, he's, he's got a big loyal fan base, and I'm uh, I'm part of it. I like Jake the Snow Roberts a lot. Great, he's a legend. Yeah, he's great. Still, you know, still talk today. Great on the mic still. Yeah. Next up, we have someone who's going to shock the world. He is the Shock Master. Unbelievable entrance uh, <laughs> into just... the world of professional wrestling. Yeah. Who thought that was a great idea? <laughs> Yeah, to take a stormtrooper helmet. Fucking Fuck. glitter up a stormtrooper hel- <laughs> helmet, and I'm, and you know, obviously we're supposed to burst through the wall, not fall through it. But... <laughs> uh, what I love just... is the, uh, the the figure that they released. Uh, oh yeah, a few years ago, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's upside down on purpose. Oh yeah, amazing, <laughs> amazing. I love sh- I love stuff like that. It's so good. And just big flare going. Oh god, when he falls over. Oh Great my moment. god. <laughs> Uh, love it. Next up, we have Oldberg, formerly Goldberg. Legend. Yeah, he has to go in legend, I think. Duh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Look, <laughs> for all right. boys' time, yeah. We, people hate Goldberg, right? But Goldberg, you know, was so unbelievably over in WCW. Yeah, that's yeah. bad. Dude was just fucking annihilating people <laughs> left, <laughs> right, and center. Came into WWE, yeah, look, it was a completely different environment. 
and when when he first came in, you know, it, it just it just it didn't work for him as it should have. No. Um, but Goldberg is a legend for what he did in WCW. And, you know, he has come back since and he has won the Universal Championship and all that sort of stuff, much to the chagrin of people. But there is no denying that Goldberg is an absolute legend. Yeah, that's fair. I'd agree with that. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And that's a pretty good list there. Good list. Uh, Guys, let us know what you think of our wrestlers heap. We know this is going to sort of divide opinion, (laughs) um, but not everybody can be a legend. Yeah, Yeah, unfortunately not. Um, But, yeah, cool. There Very we go. Cool. That was a good game heap. I enjoy uh, re- game heap wrestling. <laughs> Wrestle heap. Yeah. So good next stuff. week we should bring back the eliminator. I think we're it's Sunny versus Finn, the decider, isn't it? No, I think I so. Think, uh, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll I'll prep some questions ready for next week. Cool. Awesome. Sounds good. I think next time I'll I'll have fewer people on the list because <laughs> that went on a bit longer than I imagined it would. Yeah, but it was good. It was a good segment. Good. People enjoy it. So I, liked yeah, it. I enjoyed it. Cool. Let's. Um, we don't have to sort of go through all of the wrestling because by now it's it is Thursday at the time of recording, so people have already seen SummerSlam and all that sort of stuff, um, and NXT Takeover Thirty Six. Um, Charlotte Flair won the Raw Women's Championship. Congratulations, Charlotte! Of um, here she's the belt on Raw. There we go. Um, <laughs> Becky Lynch came back and squashed Bianca Belair in poor booking decision in four seconds. Cool. Yeah, weird yeah. one. Uh, Turning a heel as well, which is a bizarre choice. Well, you know, I know that sources have said that, but things can change. Yeah, true. But, you know, the heels get cheered these days. I think they're working off this Roman Reigns logic. <laughs> maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe. Um. Oh, yeah, Roman's... Uh, Roman's getting cheered, even though he's a bad guy. Let's do that same for Becky. Well, <laughs> doesn't quite work like that, but we'll, you know, we'll yeah. see. Um, we'll see. Samoa Joe won the NXT Championship. There's Joe. Cool. Nice. Very cool. Joe. Very happy Joe. with that. Joe. Very um, cool. Yep. Agreed. Don't know what these changes to NXT are going to look like, but from what I read today... Uh, Pete Dunne, Johnny Gargano, and a couple of others are planned to be sort of the big heels of NXT moving forward. Cool. I like that. Uh, WWE have offered Pete Dunne a new contract as well, which I'm assuming he's going to sign um, because he's still heavily featured and looks like he's going to be fighting Samoa Joe in the near future. Good. Good, good, good. So it's cool that we're getting that match, which is good. Oh, um, yeah. Katie Bates turned up. Kaylee Ray, yeah, Ray. she yeah. she turned up. Yep, yeah, good stuff. Awesome, very cool. Got a lot of time for that. Um, yeah, she's great, man. Longest reigning NXT UK Women's Champion. Got a lot of time for her. Said it was okay. a dream to wrestle in the United States, um, like full time. Yep. She's going to get that chance now, which is awesome. Excellent. Good, 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 good. Um, Walter. CM Punk uh, was Walter, a yeah. big talking point. He came back. Whoever that is. What about what about Walter? Sorry, what about Walter? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Before we go on to Phil Brooks, we'll uh, Sorry. Oh, yeah. talk about Walter and Dragon of Yeah, man, they had a war. Yeah, great, that was great match. They Excellent chopped match. the shit out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dragon of Yeah. They yeah. really oh, did. Right red. Yeah. Oh, Ouch. Man. That was a great match. That was the best match of TakeOver, I thought. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. And, yeah, new champion. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, Walter, a hell of a run. But it's, it's, yeah. what's going to be interesting now is what happens with Walter. Yeah. Now, I noticed during the match that Walter has trimmed down. Yeah. Mm. Uh, do we think that there is a main roster run? I mean, a lot can change in a few years. You know, um, his wishes may have changed. The, the, the scene in this country has changed. Um, not sure what yeah, it seems like in Europe at the minute. Obviously, things are just starting back up. So do we think a, a main roster... Yeah, so I mean, Kaylee's saying, you know, in the background here, saying money, money could be a thing, you know. Money, money, money. The money's being offered. It could be, you know, could be tempted to go to Raw or SmackDown. Why would you want to? But <laughs> but yeah, I see, you know, you said before, you didn't want to move to America full time. But as I said, but things can change. Things can, things can change. change. Yeah. And, you know, I think that apparently there was a rumor saying, you know, they want him to feature heavily uh, on, I think it was NXT, but could be either Raw or SmackDown as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. Awesome. Yeah. Um, also, Walter versus Samoa Joe, please. Thank you. 
Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Give us Walter versus Samoa Joe. That'd be absolutely awesome. Love that. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> and we, we, I know we've sort of skipped over SummerSlam, but it was just okay, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> it was okay. Yeah. yeah. Seth versus Edge was the, good. Yeah, that was yeah. the best match of the night for me. Yeah, Bobby Lashley retains. Um, destroy Goldberg's son, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, mur- murdered a child. Goldberg. Basically, <laughs> that's, just set, that's just a set of matchup for them to wrestle each other in Saudi, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Saudi Mania. <laughs> crowd Saudi Mania. Coming up in October. Yeah. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, well, the other big thing, of course, uh, Roman Reigns versus John Cena in Super Mario One, of course. Yep. Uh, you've got a new T-shirt which you can buy for one thousand dollars if you're an idiot. Yep. Um, you I get all the shit as well. Yeah, you do get other stuff. It's not just the T-shirt. It's a cool T-shirt. It's a shame that it's limited edition. Limited edition. It's yeah. a shame that it is limited. A bit of a shame. But the biggest news coming out of that is, of course, Bronco Brock <laughs> <laughs> returns Bronco. with his funny tail and his beard. Yeah. Um, his tight ass vest. <laughs> yep. But yeah, he's back. It looks like he's going to be a face as well. Mm. Yeah. You think this is a one and done appearance? Maybe it's Saudi Mania? No. No? I don't think so, no. It's too early to build for that now, isn't it? Yeah. So you're going to have another actual pay per view in between now and then, I, I would imagine. Good point, yeah. I thought so. Um, I, I don't know what's in- next, but No Mercy, maybe, or something like that? No Mercy, maybe. Remember that? Extreme Rules? Possibly. Oh, Extreme yes. Rules. It could be Extreme Rules because they moved the pay per views around, didn't they? They have, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so possibly Brock versus Roman at Extreme Rules. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting to see where Paul Heyman goes with this. Obviously, you know. Mm. Do we does do, yeah, I mean, do we then sort of have Brock win the title from Roman and then have Brock versus Lashley finally at Survivor Series? Ooh, maybe. Maybe. That'd be Assuming cool. they do Raw versus SmackDown. I don't I yeah. don't see, I just don't see Roman dropping the belt anytime soon. Well, yeah, I don't either, easy. but I I don't know. I mean it really depends how how bad WWE the... want to do Brock I versus think, Lashley, I suppose. I think what happens is Reigns Reigns beats Brock, Reigns then beats The Rock, and then Reigns then loses the belt to Logan Paul. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Reigns then loses the belt to someone. I don't know who, but I think that's where it goes. Yeah. Or he could have it lose to Brock, move him to Raw, have him beat Lashley after the Survivor Series, and then mm. other stuff, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, it's it's difficult. I mean, it's very hard to see who... I mean, I, I, st- I still think he could lose it to Drew. I move who, Drew Roman? to SmackDown. Oh yeah, mm. I think uh, yeah, I think um, you maybe could see it. you could see it. Yeah, yeah. I could I could see Drew going to SmackDown in the draft, and then yeah, I, I challenge for Reigns. Yeah, yeah. Do I like Drew? It's, yeah, I've just said it before. I like Drew a lot, but he has been a bit shoved down our throat a bit mm-hmm. um, during the, the quarantine is, era. He he carried the WWE. Him and Bailey carried yeah. WWE through the pandemic, through the performance center era. Um, you know, he really did. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. So did Bailey. Bailey was so good during that during that time as well. Yeah, it didn't help that he's putting his same view again and again and again. He had the gender match, which was fine. Now it's on this week's war, he was fighting uh, Lashley and Sheamus again. It's like, find someone else for him to fight, for the love of God. <laughs> oh, this is why he needs to move to SmackDown, freshen him up yeah, a bit. That's a good point, give him yeah. some fresh feuds, you know? Yeah, good point. Yeah. Um, I'm done watching Raw. I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. I can't. At, at this point, I just watch it to laugh. Because when when Carrion Cross came out in a stupid mask, I was literally oh, burst out laughing. Oh, <laughs> I that literally is... burst out laughing. I was like, for God's sake! <laughs> of course, you do something like this. So that's Carrion Cross. I bet, like Retribution would have been seen dead in that. It's so bad. <laughs> there he is walking out. It just looks so shit. It's like uh, last minute throwing together garbage, isn't it? Yeah, quick go to a Halloween shop, buy a mask, just whatever. That'll be fine. But I can't do it anymore. <laughs> you know, he was an undefeated monster on NXT, comes to Raw, loses to Jeff Hardy in seconds. Instantly, any sort of legacy that 
Karrion Cross had, you know, in NXT, you know, on his way out of NXT, was gone. Yep. All the mystique gone. No, All no gone. big massive fancy entrance with Scarlet. Um, none of that gone. So you've ruined what essentially could have been one of your biggest stars, one of your biggest title challenges to Lashley. Yeah, it's in there. One people who could main event WrestleMania. You have him right there. What are you doing? Yep, he is Why ruin what it? a WWE superstar looks like. Yeah, yeah. mental. But you fucked it already, and <laughs> yep. I just can't. I just can't do it. I can't bring myself to to watch it. I catch up with it. You know, I keep up with it on on social media, and you know, read for the you know, look out for the results actively on a Tuesday morning when I wake up, see what's going on, and if something interesting does happen, I will tune in. But at the minute, it's 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 unwatchable. I mean, the company yeah. at the minute is just. You feel like it's tarnished a little bit with all the releases and all that bollocks, and you have no idea what direction the company's going. You don't know if you can really get behind someone because you don't know if they're going to have a job the week after. <laughs> yeah, you, you just don't. You don't know. You, you and it's just it's just not good. No, I think what's the whole thing. What's the first half? I was like, okay, I'm done. Um, yeah, so he's, he's even turning you off it, and you're a lifer <laughs> like me. You're yeah. a lifer, and I can't do it. I can't. Yeah. The only, well, let me know a good thing. The only interesting thing I remember is like Miz and Morrison breaking up, which is yeah. cool as a feud going forwards. I like, I like them both. That'd be a good match, good set of matches, maybe. I mean, we could bang this drum forever, right? We, you know, <laughs> for, you know, we don't need to because, you know, we we at this point you don't even need to justify why you don't watch it because it's, <laughs> it's because it's obvious. bad. Yeah, and. Yeah. Especially when you see what's going on in the other company. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, AEW is going from strength to strength weekly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, CM Punk's just coming. It's a huge deal. Like, just unbelievable. Massive. Seven years he's been away, and now he's back, and it's it is an absolutely enormous deal. There he is, yeah. Big Phil. Great T-shirt. I've ordered one. Um, nice. <laughs> but at the minute, you just can't watch Raw. It's just not enjoyable. There is no. too much really good talent not being used in the yeah, right way. Exactly. That's, yeah, you could, that's the you main could issue. book that show way better. Yeah. Bring us on. We'll do it for you. Old man. <laughs> Leave give eyebrow us, just, Give us a month. Give us a month. <laughs> yeah. We'll fix it yeah. for you. Give anyone who watches wrestling a month to <laughs> yeah. book that show for you. It will I'd, look I'd... so much different to what it does now. Yeah, I mean, see, seeing what Triple H did with NXT, I would love to see what he could do with Raw. Really, yeah. Me too. without the old man in his ear, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I, re- I would love to. I would love to see that. It's you're right though. I've, I've I have very little. I'm the same as you. I quickly look on a Tuesday morning what happened on Raw, and then I mean the length of the show puts me off for one, which which you know we've talked about at. Uh, in great detail. Um, Three hours. Ugh. I, I, I'm in, I'm intrigued to see what happens with NXT, but I feel at the minute that my two shows are AW and yeah, and that's it. And that's kind yeah. of my that's it's all, all, also as well. It's about the only time I I can really give <laughs> to it. <laughs> I keep up with it, you know. I don't, I, you know, obviously, and you know, I, I do still enjoy the pay per views and stuff. But yeah, it's uh, it's a hard always, watch. It's, it's a weekly. It's a hard, hard watch. watch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. SmackDown is better. SmackDown's, yeah, good. SmackDown's going, good. going back to what you said about the NXT changes, I don't think they're going to be that drastic. I don't think they are, no. no, yeah, no. Um, yep, they're going to have a change of logo and presentation and all that sort of stuff, and that's fine. There's, that's, you know, yeah, there's no harm in doing that every now and then. Yeah. You know, Raw and SmackDown have both gone through a change in presentation over the years. That's really not an issue. Um, you know, neither is filtering through brand new stars which is you know it is effectively means nxt is developmental but keeping established stars around to to help make those new stars because you need yeah. you need old stars to make new stars yeah i thought it was interesting as well with the uh that new superstar initiative i think they were doing uh it was it wasn't a bigger guy one it was a you know small quicker guy that like commander hayes yeah. Um, yeah, I was, you know, I was like, oh, big guy, I think I'm in this, you know, WWE, don't want bigger guys. Uh, but no, it was, uh, you know, yeah, it's another guy. It's a great, great talent. Yeah, mm. awesome. They're both but great. You, you, yeah, I mean, Odyssey Jones is really cool as well. Um, yeah. But, you know, you need to keep 
the established talent around. That's why that's why you have to have Joe as the champion. Joe, Joe yeah. as the champion's a great choice. Because, you know, he he will stick around in NXT and when he's not wrestling anymore, he'll, you know, transition into a backstage role in NXT. And that's a great coach to have around. You know? Pete Dunn, you know, he's come up the same a similar sort of you know, it's come up through the indies and he'll have a lot to give. Mm. You know, that so I don't think the changes are gonna be as drastic or as as damaging as what people are assuming they're gonna be. No, hopefully not, yeah. But exactly. after this after this sort of batch of tapings, these uh, I know the last two weeks, uh, so this week's just that it was on last night, or sorry, Tuesday night, and next week's they've been pre taped. Um and I but I would imagine the week after that is when we'll start to see presentation changes. Yeah. But there's just, you know, it's, it's going to have to happen gradually. There's, you can't just obliterate a show and just be like, right, this is what this is now. <laughs> it's just going to happen. Yeah. You have to carry on. You have to, you have to do these things gradually. So, you know, you're going to have to filter these new people in. Yeah, um, sure. yeah. It's not going to be overnight change. That's a, and you can build new stars. They've signed a shitload of people to the performance center. You've got to utilize them at some point, you know? <laughs> so they've thinned the herd. Okay. As shit as it is, they've thinned the herd. Um, there'll be people go from NXT to Raw uh, or SmackDown in the draft, you would you would imagine. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, that gives you more room to bring some of these guys, you know, through. Yeah, I think that's kind of I alluded to that on uh, either Saturday or Sunday when we did the. Uh, well, it wasn't Saturday. I wasn't on Saturday's pre-show. So yeah, Sunday. I uh, you know I said I think we we all kind of had feelings that maybe the the old releases were to do with you know reducing the wage bill uh, and to uh, potentially get the books looking better, ready to sell up. But actually, yeah, it it feel it feels now like it's more a case of. Yeah, well, well, like exactly what you've just said. Thin the herd because we need to make room in NXT. So we need mm -hmm. to like, we need to push people up. Well, T Tony Khan said it himself. He was like, "There's no way that WWE could have continued to maintain that size of roster." Yeah. So basically, what they're doing is they're cutting people. They're cutting people, and uh, you know, it's going to increase their profit margin because you're getting those people off the books. Of course. So. Uh, and, you know, Tony Khan wasn't running down WWE. He actually said, you know, he was going to, with what he said, he was actually sort of praising the company to a degree mm -hmm. from a from a business perspective. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. You'd, I mean, if they hadn't said it was budget cuts and they just left it alone then and, and didn't say anything, um, you know, then it is what it is. It's not budget cuts because, you know, it's just increasing your, your own profit. Yeah, just, just yeah, pretty much. Be honest, just be honest. We've got too many wrestlers, and we've not got anything for yeah, them. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's pay, it. We're paying people to sit around. Yeah, 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 exactly. We're paying people to to do nothing, and which is not good enough. Which you, you can't no. do. Let you these people go out and do stuff. I mean, you know, Murphy, uh, Buddy Murphy is going to be. <clears throat> excuse me, going to Impact. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, Braun Strowman was rumored to be going to Impact as well. Ooh. All right. That'd be nice. That'd be cool. That'd be, That'd be nice. Um, well, that's, whether, well, that's whether it's true. Scott Demore sort of teased both of them coming in. All right, cool. Um, whether Braun Strowman comes to fruition or not is another thing, but Murphy, that looks like his destination, and which would make perfect sense. It would. So you've got to let these people go and wrestle in other places and actually show the world what they can do. So, yeah, it's shit that people lose their jobs, but there's other there's jobs elsewhere. And we again, we've spoke about that ad nauseum on this podcast. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, going back to NXT, the, the, the changes just aren't going to be as drastic as we fear that they would be. It's still going to be spearheaded by Triple H, according to Nick Khan, um, and who was very honest in that interview that he had. Mm. Um, very honest. You know, he's willing to take the heat for releasing people and all the bad things that come from WWE because they're, you know, they're part of his decisions. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see, interested to see what NXT is going to look like going forward from a couple of weeks' time. But I am also interested to see some new people come through. Yeah, I'm interested to see what happens. It's like, you know, I'm, 
you know, I'm big, big, big into AEW at the minute. So, you know, Adam Cole's going to go there. It's obvious. Or is he? No, he's going to go there. <laughs> or Obviously. is he? Adam Cole, he's, he's going to go there. He definitely, he's <laughs> yeah, not going to turn is. up on Raw or SmackDown or anything like that. Because why would you? Um, his contract <laughs> runs out at the end of this week. So his last date that he worked was Sunday. His contract runs out at the end of this week. And then he can start negotiating with um, anyone else. So he's going to yeah. go to AEW, of course, and that's fine. <laughs> uh, because his friends are there, his, his girlfriend's there. Go nuts. Bray Wyatt's um, heavily rumoured to go there as well, which makes perfect sense. Because mm-hmm. um, they'll let him just go and do weird shit there when that's fine. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, we, we, gradually, we, yeah. you know, Ruby Ruby Riot's going there. Oh, is she? Daniel Bryan's going there. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people. Let's have so to know. Fuck, that, that roster, man. Jesus. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> The only danger of having too many big stars and not having enough to do with them. Maybe. Uh, Maybe, I mean, you you know, I I think Rampage probably goes to two hours eventually. Yeah, good point. Um, But I think they do a pretty good, I mean, they've got a lot of shows. I mean, Dark and Dark Elevation and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of, and there's a lot of people watching those shows on YouTube because, well, they're on YouTube for a start, which is a good thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Do you think Um, there'll be some sort of brand split with Rampage and Dynamite at some point? no. No, No, I don't. No. I think I think as well, like some of the, a lot of the, you know, like you Daniel Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, Chris Jericho, you know, the, those sort of guys. That, yeah, it's okay. You must we'll start to look at it and think airtime for these people um, to to have matches. A lot of them don't want to be wrestling every week. You mm-hmm. know, Daniel Bryan has said that quite openly. Sure. You know, I want I almost want to choose my own schedule. You know, yeah, and we don't know what sort of deal they've got. They might have a, it might be like a basic deal, and then a bonus for every time you. I don't, I don't know, but and that's it. I mean, CM Punk said it in his uh, in his promo, didn't he? That uh, he was like one one show a week or something like that. Two shows a week, four pay per views a year, perfect. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. a lot of these guys they don't want. You know, Christian, he doesn't want. Yeah, he could have gone back to with Edge being there. He could have gone back to WWE. No, probably, no doubt. But they'd have wanted him eventually to go on the road, be on Raw or SmackDown every week, be at every pay per view. Yeah, he doesn't want that at his age. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I don't know. you know, it feels like for a lot of these guys, there it's the AEW is the perfect fit for them. Well, and, and you look at it as well. I mean, this week they had trios matches on it on uh, AEW. Yeah. So, you know, you're getting a lot of stars, you know, in there all at once. So, you know, yeah. Moxley, Kingston and Darby Allen with Sting were one of the trios. And, you know, I think mm. I, I think what we'll see eventually in AEW is a trios championship. So that, you know, you get a lot of people on screen all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. we can see that. And AEW is fortunate enough to have a lot of te- uh, a lot of teams or factions and all that sort of Action, stuff. Yeah. So a trios championship is actually possible. And, you know, you are going to get a lot of people on screen all at the same time. Um, but like you know, like I said, they've got shows where they can showcase talent. Dark and Dark Elevation. They've got Dynamite, which is main TV. Rampage, which is main TV. So there's a lot of scope for, and they have a lot of big, you know. Yeah, they might only have four pay per views a year, but they have a lot of you know special editions of Dynamite where it's something different. You know, yeah, like yeah. Fight for the Fallen and uh, Fighter Fest and that kind of thing. Road Rager or whatever. So there's a lot of um, scope for talent to be showcased in different ways. Yeah, Daniel Bryan won't come in. He won't wrestle every week and be on a full-time schedule or nothing like that. Um, CM Punk, I think, will be around a lot. But, you know, people come and go. People will want vacations. So so people will, you know, Moxley's a new dad. He's going to want to spend time with his his child. Yeah, He's going to want, you know, time off. And that gives someone else time to come in. Then Moxley comes back and someone else goes off. You know, it can be a bit of a revolving door of talent. Plus, these people can go and wrestle elsewhere. You know, obviously, they've got the partnership with Impact and New Japan. And, you know, the possibilities with AEW are endless, whereas WWE is WWE. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm not, yeah, I'm not too worried about um, NXT. Uh, I mean, WWE is always going to be a business. You know, it's always going to be there. They The profit is outrageous. And... You know, Raw did over 2 million this week. SmackDown does over 2 million every week. NXT was the one that was struggling, and that's the one that Vince is wanting to take action 
on and obviously he's going to implement changes whether they work or not is another thing but we'll see yeah, yeah we'll see time will tell pro wrestling in general is in a good place at the minute raw sucks but everything else is pretty good yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. everything but raw yeah everything but raw yeah there we go we're in cool. agreement everything but raw Morgan. <laughs> all right anything else got uh, anybody else got anything they want to add before we uh no man it's been a good part yeah that's about it yeah, a lot of good discussion points. Uh, obviously, hit us up on Discord and on social media at Games and Graps. That's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, just let us know what you thought. You know, let us know what you thought of our wrestler heap. Let us know what you think about the changes that are coming to NXT and um, how do you feel about the roster being so stacked on AEW. Um, a lot, loads of good stuff to talk about. Loads of really interesting talking points. Um, but yeah, hit us up. We'd like to hear from you and. Yeah. Yeah, but for now, this has been episode 151 of the Games and Graphs podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts across podcast services everywhere. 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 And youtube.com <laughs> forward slash games graphs. Like I said before, check us out on all the social medias, join our Discord, and uh, yeah, just uh, generally look out for us doing things. Yes. We'll My here. name is Sonny G and I've been here with Finn Steele. Goodbye. And Steve. See you later. And we'll be back next week for episode 152. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Yeah.